Hey guys, it is the Monday Morning Marketing Show. Today we are going to talk about how anything can work, but it doesn't necessarily work for you right now. So the reason why I wanna talk about this is because I'm writing a blog post about three different approaches to Instagram. And I had someone in the group over the weekend, I was going through the comments and going through the you know things that people were posting and someone was saying like, oh my gosh, there's so many different changes for Instagram. Like it almost feels like it's not worth it anymore. Um, I'm not getting the same engagement. I'm not seeing the same stuff. What really stuck out to me, what she was saying was that she was like, I feel like I'm doing all the right things, but I'm not getting any more results. I'm not getting clients. I'm not getting people following me. I'm not, whatever it is that she wasn't getting. She wasn't seeing that the things that she had been doing working. Um, and so people had some suggestions for her, but what I wanted to talk about is Instagram is not an end to itself. What Instagram really is, it's a tool to get you to your end goal. And what social media is, what marketing really is, what all of this is, is we're trying to get people's attention so we can story tell to them, we can tell them a story to make them take an action to do something. No matter what you are, I don't care if you're a... Um, an MLM business, I don't care if whatever it is, a writer, if you are like me and you do a service, if you sell a product, if you are a charity, if you are a politician, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're doing, social media is to get people's attention, tell them a story, and have them do something at the end, right? So Instagram is just one tool for that. It's just one way of doing that. Um, and what people get stuck on is that when they listen to me or they listen to other people and they get all these ideas and suggestions, they follow the methods, right? They follow the system, they follow the strategy, and they do it for months or weeks or a year or whatever, and they don't see the same results as they did in certain times because this stuff is fluid, right? I will give you all sorts of ideas, I will give you insights, I will give you tips, I will give you suggestions, but they are just that. They are tips and they are suggestions. Say hi, Smurfs. Um, and they don't necessarily, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you every time, right? So this woman had been using the same set of hashtags in every post for the last, I don't even know how long, maybe a month. Um, and what you need to understand is all of this is just a test. You're just testing to see what's going to work for you. And what's going to work for you isn't necessarily what's going to work for you next week or the week after that or the month after that. You have to continuously be seeing what people are engaging with, the conversations that you're having. And then you have to be willing to switch it up and be elastic, right? And this goes for everything. Instagram should not be the only place you're marketing your business. And the one thing that also stuck out to me is like people get frustrated with this, right? People are like, I'm spending so much time and energy on Instagram. But what you're forgetting is that this is free, right? These people have built a platform for you to do what you want to do, to sell your things. And just because the things that you've been sharing on there isn't selling your stuff, doesn't mean that their platform is bad. It means you're just not figuring out what's working for your business and your story and what's connecting with the audience that you're trying to get, right? So it might be so many different factors. It might be that Instagram is not the right place for you to be. It might be that you haven't nailed down your audience enough to know where their attention is. If the people that are buying things from you are not actually putting their attention on Instagram, then Instagram's not the right place for you. You shouldn't be putting your effort there. You should probably be putting your effort other places. Maybe the people you're trying to speak to, maybe their attention is more on Facebook. Maybe their attention is more on Facebook groups. Maybe their attention is more on email. Maybe that's what they do the first thing every day. You're never gonna know where their attention is unless you actually ask them. So I see that there are some people here. Oh. And let me go back. Goodness. I just want to make sure I'm seeing comments if they're coming up. So um, you just need to co continuously know that this is going to be fluid. None of this is ever set in stone. You don't get handed. This isn't like college where you get handed a textbook and you say, do these things and you will get these results. That is not what happens here on social media or in marketing in general. Everything could work. So another thing I hear people say that's kind of like a myth is like, oh, this is dead right? Like Periscope is dead. Um, email marketing is dead. Newsletters are dead. Print is dead. That is not the case. Anything might work. It has to be specific to your business. You have to look at your budget. You have to look at your audience. You have to look at their attention. And you have to understand that you're trying to spend the least amount of money to get a certain result. So yes, any business, like my mother-in-law has a brick and mortar store and it's in Mesa and she has all kinds of options. Oh, and Mindy's here. Hey, Mindy. She has all kinds of options where she could put her marketing money, right? She could put her marketing money in these little newsletters that go to retirement homes. 
that's fine. She totally could do that. If that is the client that she wants to come in her store because she feels like she will get the best return for that, she absolutely can do that. These people that she's trying to get their attention to come in, they are not spending their time on Instagram. So if that is her ideal client, if that is the way she is making the most money, it makes perfect sense to purchase a full page ad in this little retirement home magazine and get people into the store if that is her goal. Her goal is not that though. Unfortunately, those women that live in retirement homes probably are not spending a lot of money buying furniture. They are not, they're downsizing, right? They're in a stage in their life where they are trying to get rid of stuff. They're not trying to get more stuff in their homes. They're probably moving to either assisted living or maybe retirement communities where things are furnished already for them. And so they are actually not her ideal client because they might come in and purchase um, like gifts and things like that. And we of course want them to come in. We absolutely welcome everyone into her store, but our marketing dollars are not best spent in that magazine. Our marketing dollars for that store are best spent in a place that's going to grab the attention of people that are going to spend the most money for her store. And those are people that are purchasing furniture. So who is purchasing furniture? Let's think about that. Probably women that are probably in their late thirties to mid forties between the ages of 35 to 44, because either they or their husbands might be getting a promotion. They or, they or their husbands might decide they want to purchase a new home and upgrade, right? So when you're just starting out, like think about it this way, think of the people, right? When you're just starting out and you're just having kids and you're like young, usually you don't have a ton of money to you know spend. So you're gonna go and get like Ikea furniture or you're gonna go and get secondhand furniture or you're gonna go and get hand-me-downs from family and friends. You're gonna get used things because you don't have a lot of money to spend. So that's what you're doing when you're really young. When you move forward to that point in your life where your career is taking off, your kids are a little bit older, so they're not going to trash their furniture, you're moving into a new house that's bigger, that is a time where they're going to actually invest money in furniture. So it just makes sense that you're thinking, okay, I could market to anyone, but the people that probably are the best fit for our store are going to be in that 35 to 44 range. So where are their attention? Where is their attention being spent? Are they on Facebook or are they on Instagram? Are they on both? They're probably on both. Are they professionals? Are they stay at home moms? Where do they spend their time? If they are women that are literally going to the grocery store, purchasing magazines, and they're coming home and flipping through those magazines, if that is your person, then purchase a magazine ad because that makes sense for their business. So Mindy, just like you, for your husband, your husband owns, um, I don't know if it's construction or if it's concrete or if it's whatever kind of business it is. Who are the people that are going to be hiring him? And where is their attention? Maybe their attention's on the radio. Maybe a radio ad does make sense for you because the people that are purchasing, if you, let's just say you pour concrete, your husband does. If that's what he does and you know that the people that are hiring you are like general contractors, where are general contractors' attention? It could be on a bulletin board at Home Depot for crying out loud. You have to think of the actual human beings behind these businesses, behind who is handing you the dollars. And then just know where do they look every day? Where are they spending all their time? If they are on their phones and they are on apps or they are on social media, what platforms? If you don't know the answer to this question, you have to ask them. You have to literally call them up and say, can I take you for a coffee and ask you some questions? Or you just DM them on Instagram or you private message them on Facebook or you find them at the grocery store and hey, um, by the way, I'm trying to figure out this new business. Do you mind just telling me like, where do you pay to, like, where do you find the people that you're going to be hiring? Is it Craigslist? Is it whatever? And then once you know where their attention is, then you have to start telling those stories to get their attention. Let's say it is Craigslist. Craigslist is fine if that's where you want people to get, you know, hire you from, but then how do you stand out on Craigslist? How do you have your ad stand out from everybody else's? If you're getting put in a retirement home magazine and that really is your ideal client and you want them to come in from that, how do you stand out there? How do you grab their attention? What stories do you need to tell them with their